In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a resume or CV that you can send to prospective employers. It's going to be a very simple, professional and very lean type of CV that will just contain all the pertinent information that you need to send. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to be using Microsoft Word, but you can basically use any document editor that contains features such as font formatting, bullets, and tables. As long as you, you can do those, you'll be fine. So the first thing I want to do is to change the page layout so that the margins are narrow. Then I'm going to insert a table that is uh, two columns wide by one row high. Now, I don't want to see the borders of this table, so I'm just going to highlight it and set borders to no border. Now, of course, that can make it difficult for me to see exactly where the cells are within this table. So what I'm going to do is go to layout and view grid lines. And now I can see the table without actually needing to have any borders. So the first thing I'm going to add is my name. And I'm using dummy details, so don't worry about that. And I'm going to just enter John Smith. And what I'm going to do is highlight that and just go to Font Properties. And I'm going to make sure that the font is small caps. So what that means is that the first letter is slightly bigger than the rest. So the J is bigger than the OHN and the S is bigger than the MITH. Now if you don't, if your application doesn't have small caps, you can just play about with the font size to get the same effect. I'm just going to increase the font size to 26 so that it's nice and big and you can see that same small caps effect has stayed in place. Okay, so I'm just going to hit return and this time I want the font size to be 10 points. And I'm just going to enter my date of birth and my country of residence. You can see it's still applying the all caps, so I'll just change that. Great, and I also just want to make sure that that ST in first is superscript, so that it's just high. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to move on to this right side of the table, and I'm just going to hit return. I'm just going to insert a table that will be two columns by five rows. And again, I'm just going to select it and make sure it has no borders. And here I'm going to enter my address, telephone, mobile number, and email. I'm just going to put the labels in. The first one is address, the second one will be blank because it will have the second line of the address. And we've got telephone. going to align these to the right and here I'm just going to enter my information Now one thing I will say about your email address when you're sending it uh, in a resume to prospective employers is to create a professional email address. So for example, John Smith at livings.co.uk is perfectly fine, but having something like, I don't know, funnybeer at yahoo.co.uk, that's not very professional. So if you don't have a professional email, then I suggest you uh, sign up with one of the email providers, you know, Microsoft. Google, Yahoo, and just get yourself a, a professional email address. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm just going to move out of this table and set another line. 
Now I'm going to insert another table here, and this is just going to be a one cell table. And again, I'm just going to select it and set the borders this time to have nothing on the left and nothing on the right. So you've just got a border at the top and a border at the bottom. And here I'm going to put in my most sort of highlighted feature. So whether that's some experience I had working for a top end company, or whether it's some academic credential I have or something that I achieved that will go here. If you're just starting out and you haven't been in employment, then you can put your aspirations in here. Great, so I'm just going to make this font size 12 and bold. Just like that. Excellent, so I'm just going to move down one line and now I'm going to add in my employment details. Now the font I'm using throughout will be Calibri and I recommend that you only use one font and stick to that. I'm just going to make this bold. I'm just pressing Ctrl-V to bold it. So I'm just going to add a few returns, just so that I've got some lines to play with. And I'm just going to click that employment details line and add a board, bottom border, just like that. I'm also going to make sure that this is bold, which it is, and font size 14, just like that. Okay, and here I'm going to add in another table, which will be a, a two column by one row table. And again, I'm just going to select it and make sure there are no borders. And in here, I'm going to put in my latest employment if I'm still with an employer or the last uh, job that I had. So I'm just going to put in the name of the company. Again, these are all just fictitious uh, details. I don't want it to be bold, so I'm just pressing Ctrl-V to get rid of the bold. You might, however, want to make the job title label bold, so that it's uh, much easier to, to look at when somebody's looking at your CV. But that's entirely up to you. I'll leave it unbolded. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to put in uh, from when to when I was in this job. In different parts of the world, it seems to be from when to when, or it seems to be the duration that you were in that employment. So I'm just going to use the win to win. Again, I just don't want it to be bold and I want it to be aligned to the right. Just like that. And what I'm also going to do is to make sure that this table, it actually has some shading. So I'm just going to go to uh, the design and then shading and I'm going to give it this sort of the lightest uh, grey that there is so just like that just so that it stands out a little bit more and here now I'm just going to add in bullet points uh, of what I did or what I was responsible for or my achievements within that job
great. So I'm just going to make sure that this is font size 10. And if you find font size 10 is a little too small for yourself, then you know, just go ahead and stick with 11 or 12 and that's fine. I'm just going to remove the bold and I'm just going to remove from all of these lines any additional paragraph space that's been added. So I'm just going to click remove space after paragraph. On your application, it may be remove space from paragraph or you may have to change the line height just to make sure that it's not too spaced, to make sure that the lines are not too spaced. And I'm just going to select these three and I'm just going to add a uh, bullet point to each, to each of them. And if you find that it's too indented, then just use uh, the decrease indent feature in your application and push it to the left. Great, so I'm going to create three of these because I have three uh, jobs that I want to write about. I'm just going to copy this all, press Control C and then Control V to paste them. So I'm just going to change those and then I'll be right back. Okay, great. So now I've added all that information and I'm just going to clean up some of the formatting. So for example, here I can see there's uh, additional space between that last bullet point and where this information starts. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the space after paragraph. Okay, now I'm also going to change all of these STs to superscript. Uh, you can leave them like this if you want, or you can make them superscript. It's entirely up to you. I'm just using the short uh, cut keys, shift, control, and plus, just to toggle between superscript and normal. Great. Okay, so let's move on to the next section, which is going to be academic background. So all of your headings should be the same format and I'm just again going to click on academic background and I'm going to add a bottom border. Now here I'm going to insert a new table which will be three columns by five rows. Again, I'm just going to highlight it and I'm just going to remove the borders. And it's going to be a case of one row contains the information, the next row is blank and then the, the third row can contains information so it's nice and spaced to evened out. So I'm just going to enter in my first academic qualification, which is going to be my most recent one. I'll do that for all uh, three qualifications that I have and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've added those details and as you can see for the A-levels I've listed all the, uh, the subjects that I did along with the grades that I got. I'm just going to make those bullet points. But for GCSEs I've summarised it in terms of nine GCSEs grades A to C. Now if you want, you can list all the subjects that you did at, as well as the grades that you got. If you have a long list of qualifications, then I suggest you summarise them. If you have a, a shorter list of qualifications, then it may be more important to highlight what grades you did get. Okay, great. So let's just move on to the next section, which is going to be professional development. So these are going to be uh, qualifications or training that you've completed either within your current jobs or previous jobs or things such as first aid training, equal opportunities training and stuff, stuff like that. So again I'm just going to click on the line and I'm going to add a bottom border and then just, this is either going to, depending on how much you have to write, this is either going to be bullet points or it's just going to be normal sentences. So I'm just going to put in I don't want this to be bold. 
And that's great. So now I'm just going to do the last one, which is going to be uh, other information. And again, I'm just going to add a bottom border and just make it bold. And this is just going to be anything else that you feel that you want to write. So it could be your hobbies, what you have interest in, any type of group uh, that you're in. Anything else that you, you think may be applicable to this job that you're applying for. Great, so now I'm just going to remove that excess page at the bottom. And I'm just going to go back to the top and I'm just going to make sure that there are no additional paragraph spaces. I think there's one there, so I'll just remove that. I think there's one there. I'm just going to enter an additional line here just so that it's more neatly spaced out and remove the space after paragraph. Great. And that's uh, the CV or resume done. So now you might be thinking well, there are lots of strange blue uh, dotted lines around it. the whole place. Will they show up? They won't show up. They're just for our guidance. And I'm just going to go ahead and just remove them. So I'm just going to click on any table and just go to layout and remove a few grid lines. I'm just going to hide the ribbon. And let me just zoom out a bit. And that's what this uh, resume will look like. And as you can see, it's only one side. I think between one to two sides is perfectly acceptable. Anything more than that, and it's unlikely that your prospective employer uh, will read it. Okay, and it's important that you check your spelling, you check your years that you've been working in places and, and when you've completed your qualifications and you make sure that the grammar is correct and you make sure that your formatting is consistent throughout your whole of your CV. When sending your CV, make sure that it's actually tailored so that it's applicable towards the job that you are that you want to apply to. Make sure that you always include a cover letter explaining which job it's for. And if you're sending it via email, I would suggest that you save it as a PDF and then send that PDF rather than a Word document because they might open uh, your Word document in their Microsoft Word and the margins may be different and the entire formatting will uh, go completely wrong and it won't look as nice as it did when you sent it. So I hope you enjoyed this video, so please uh, rate, comment and subscribe.